uh, interior room one point perspective based on the uh, courtyard one point perspective uh, you need to establish a floor plan of your room locate where the element, elements are and uh, create a grid to help you with that uh, this shows you kind of the finished well not exactly but uh, the rough of the finished position of the elements I'm going to now uh, do it over with a um, another room. Okay. So depending on, of course, whether it's a square or a rectangle, I mean, who knows, maybe you have a different shape, but um, you're going to establish that and then you can create a uh, rough grid that is in squares. The reason it's in squares is because it's easier then to use the diagonal as your reference point. Okay? So I don't know how big that room is. Uh, even if you don't have tiles, just create these tiles. So that when you transpose that into your, um, into your perspective drawing, uh, you know how many units. So this is six units by four units, whatever those are. Okay. Um, we're also going to decide, as we said, that whatever the length of your, of whatever the depth of your room, we're going to position ourselves at the same distance from the front as the depth of your room. Okay, so these are going to be the same, and that, and the only reason for doing that is because then we can easily find the back wall, this part right here. Okay. Uh, imagine that your room has one wall that's been taken out and you're going to look at that, you know, through that opening. Um, so, let's see. Uh, once, you, once you define the grid, just, you know, decide where every element is. I guess, it, you know, you have to see where they are in your room, but since I'm just making it up, I'm just going to put my... Um, Uh, my bed in this corner, my night table there, my desk. I'm going to have a big desk. Um, and I think I'm asking that there be like um, a door, a person, a window, a per uh, a, yeah, a chair maybe, and a table. Um, by the way, this door here it wouldn't be like that. It would probably open this way. But if I do that, then I, I have the door in front of me. So. Let's see what else. Maybe there is a lamp here, maybe there is a chair, and maybe there is a rug right here. Okay. And maybe there is a window over your, um, over your, over your desk. Okay. So, um, we start out with probably something that looks like this, right, roughly. And if you measured your room, you would do that proportionally, right? So if that's, I don't know, 8 feet, 10 feet, maybe that's 15 feet. Your room is probably not that long, but... Um, then we're going to establish the um, horizon line. And for the sake of simplicity, I'll just put it in the middle, okay? So I'm just going to say, again, that this is maybe 10 feet, and then this is then 5 feet. Okay. Uh, if the room were taller, let's say 12 feet, then you get a more interesting perspective because the floor is going to be uh, more foreshortened than the ceiling. Uh, so that's an option too. But regardless whether it's going there or there, uh, this trick of placing yourself at the same distance from the first plane as the distance of the depth of the, of the room is what allows you to then take the height of the person, right? The person is here somewhere, uh, and half that, okay? And that is going to give me the back corner of the room, this one, this line right there. Okay, so that line is this line. Uh, then, because I've already established, oh, the, uh, vanish, the vanishing point I'm putting, uh, here it's a little bit, it looks like I've put it about here, okay? So I have 
six divisions which you would mark on your ground. Yeah, okay, actually it's more like there. Uh, and then you just project your lines to your vanishing point, okay? Same thing we did for the garden. Uh, once you establish that, then with a diagonal, it's a little rough now, but with a diagonal you get the crossing points. Oops, I did this wrong. Uh, sorry. What I need to do is go with the diagonal through a square, not through the rectangle. rectangle. So I need to go to one, two, three, four, to here. Right? So in other words, on my plane I would draw this diagonal which is going to give me these spots for my grid. Okay? And then for the side, it doesn't matter because I get whatever I get, right? Okay, so once again, the diagonal has to be drawn on a square. Um, and, okay, so now, let's just keep it simple. We'll, we'll use the lower part. And of course, these are the corners, and I raise up, and I make the wall in the back. Okay. So now that you have the basic uh, construction, uh, mind you, you can put your person anywhere you want, right? It really depends on what's in the room, what kind of effect you want. Uh, putting it a little bit off-center makes it more interesting, I think, unless you have, unless you have like a theater set, maybe that's very symmetrical. Uh, and you can think of this as a theater set, right? As a, as a stage. All right, so now I proceed to mark on the floor these objects, right? So my desk, yeah, it's too big. I'm gonna make my desk a little smaller. Okay, like that. So that's one and a half modules, and I can see here, uh, I could just have that. And I'm just going to like sort of extrude the parts now without really thinking about, you know, furniture design. Um, so that's my desk, the footprint of my desk, the carpet or the rug is, let's see, one, two, three, four, one, so it's here, about halfway. Okay, and then the bed is very far. It's, it's hard to see now. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. In the video you won't see this, but... So it'll be this area here of three squares, okay? And the night table will be here. So now let's just say that your night table and your bed are maybe a foot and a half tall. So on this side, on the true dimension, which is the plane of the paper, um, if I have five feet there, I try to find one and a half, so I divide this into five, I mark off one and a half, and I project this way. And then here, let's see, there's the night table right here, I bring it up. And then using a combination of horizontal lines and vanishing lines and vertical lines, I construct my objects. It's my night table. Uh, the same line is going to give me the corner of the bed. It's getting a little fuss, fussy there. Sorry, apologize. And then the desk, let's just say it's three feet, so if that's five. Uh, I project from there, then I raise my sides. And I get my desk, okay. Uh, then you can put a person Draw my my door 
here that's probably maybe eight feet. Okay. Uh, so anyway, that's pretty rough, but that's what you need to do. Establish your floor plan, locate all the items, uh, draw a grid, use the diagonal to get the horizontals, uh, transpose all the shapes onto your grid, and then essentially just you know bring them up, kind of like you know what you do in Google SketchUp if you use that. Um, and that's that's really it. So you can use a uh, straight edge for your drawing, and then maybe you can do a trace, and you can do it by freehand, or you can leave it a straight edge. Okay, doesn't have to be um, you know perfect, but the main thing is that the relationships are correct. So all your lines. Okay, you guys look up for a second. All your lines, they're going back, you know, this direction, they're all going to converge onto your vanishing point. All the lines that are the opposite way, horizontal, they're going to stay horizontal. Okay, it's just that the staggering is, gives you the perspective. And uh, that's, that's it for the room.